If you're watching a video on Assassin's Creed Origins today, I'm guessing it's because you've seen it in a sale and you think, ooh, that looks cheap, I wonder if it's worth it. And the answer to that is, no, I don't think it is worth it. Not unless, A, it's extremely cheap, and or B, you're the sort of person that likes doing the same thing over and over again until your brain turns into porridge and runs out of your ears. So, welcome to Mark's Game Reviews, and here's what I think of Assassin's Creed Origins. Origins is set in ancient Egypt and tries to tell the story of the forming of the Assassins. If you've never played an Assassin's Creed game before, then basically you play as Bayek, this really cool warrior and protector of his people who's out for revenge on some badasses that killed his son. Alas, he gets caught up in all sorts of political machinations, has a few relationship problems, and ends up getting drawn into politics and war. However, if you're experienced with the Assassin's Creed games, you'll know that it doesn't really work like that because you actually play a modern day archeologist who's plugged herself into this machine that can read the memory from DNA samples found in ancient artifacts. And it's actually those memories that you are reliving through the archeologist as you play the game. Yeah, I've always thought that this is utter nonsense. And in my experience, it doesn't really add anything to the Assassin's Creed games, but hey, maybe that's just me. I just want to play someone having an adventure. Anyway, the game casts you into the semi-open world of ancient Egypt, and it is pretty big, as you set off tracking down bad guys, helping local villagers by slaying bandits and the occasional beast, and generally getting embroiled into a story which I found rather confusing. In a change with tradition from the previous Assassin's Creed games, combat in this is more akin to a modern action RPG, as opposed to the previous games, which were a button-mashing whirling dervish. Also, for the most part, stealth is pretty much optional. If you want to play stealthy like an assassin, you go for it. But this game is, is far more open to different play styles. You can go the pure warrior style, the sneaky stealthy assassin style, you can go as an archer style of play. It's uh, entirely up to you. Now at this point in the video, I would normally discuss the graphics and the sound, but we're gonna skip straight to my likes and dislikes because both those features are in my list of likes. And apart from those, it's not a very big list. So let's talk about them now. The graphics in Assassin's Creed Origins are easily, in my opinion, the best thing about the game. It looks absolutely stunning. The world that has been created ancient Egypt here looks amazing the details in there the colors and they are vibrant colors they're not what I expected you can go and see the pyramids you can go and see the lighthouse and the library of Alexandria it looks absolutely amazing and the colors on the temples and buildings I don't know if they're historically accurate I, I don't really care because they just look so good and when you're out running around in the desert and the sand and there's rocks and things, oh man, it looks nice. I absolutely love the world. But it's not all just sand and desert and stone and buildings. Uh, there's also the great waterways and the swamplands and the islands. There's quite a good variation of terrain and scenery in this. And it all looks fantastic. I, I really can't get over how good it looks. And the sound in this game is also of a really high standard. The sound effects in battle and everything else and people dying, well, they're fine. But what really stood out was some of the voice acting, some of the accents used. Some of the accents, by the way, seem really out of place. Like some of the Greek accents sound like they're from some 1970s British comedy. <laughs> Someone traveling overseas to a Greek resort. It's, it sounds really really put on i don't know uh, if that should be correct or not it didn't sit well with me but for the most part the main character's accents are beautifully voiced and really well acted by x is excellent and i i really liked it and really enjoyed that as well it was you who murdered my son before my eyes you are a fool at the temple in Siwa. and speaking of Bayek. He is a really likable character. I mean, he's the sort of guy you'd want to go out for a drink with, but he's also the sort of guy that you trust to look after your kids if you had to run off in an emergency. <laughs> Maybe not right at the start of the game. You'll see if you ever play the story. But he becomes this really likable father figure and just, just a really, really nice, dependable, reliable guy. I'm not quite sure if that's the character that you want in an assassin but I liked him, really enjoyable to play through. And you do spend most of the game playing as him, but not all. 
Also, weapon choices. This game has a huge variety of melee weapons to play with and various bows as well. And the good thing is, is that they all feel pretty viable. So if you want to play as a dual wielding sword warrior, that's fine. If you want to go daggers, big hammers, big axes, a spear perhaps. Well, it all seems pretty viable. There's lots of choice and selection. And the great thing is, I didn't really find that one build and one set of weapons was way superior to any other. So if you just want to play for style points, you pick the weapons that you really like the look of or the ones that you really like the feel of when you're fighting uh, for the speed of the attacks and the effects they have and just go with them. You also get given an eagle companion in this game, which is very useful. It does occasionally hunt animals for you, but <laughs> we'll talk about the animal hunting later on. But it's much more useful for spotting objectives over areas and zones and seeking out treasure chests, which it seems to be able to do with x-ray vision because it can look straight through walls and pinpoint exactly where your target is in any particular area. A little bit odd that, but it does make completing the quests considerably easier. And that, I'm afraid, is all that I liked about the game, which leads us into a very big long list of dislikes and problems. Now, I actually enjoyed the first couple of hours of Assassin's Creed Origins until I realized what the game was all about. And that is grind and repetition. Oh my God, is this game grindy? Like the first time you notice this, it's when you realize you're gonna have to grind animals. And I don't mean in a sexual sense. I'm talking about hunting them until your fingers bleed from pressing the buttons on the controller. You see, you don't loot armor in this game. You upgrade your starting braces and chest piece and legs or whatever else you've got by getting the materials to improve them. And you get most of those materials from killing animals. Anything that moves really that can be skinned, you're going to have to kill it. And the amount of materials you need to upgrade your starting armor is absolutely insane. You will be killing hundreds upon hundreds of hyenas, lions, desert gazelles or whatever they are, hippos crocodiles just non-stop and the trouble is that every single animal the predators they have their own attack pattern for that species and you're going to do hundreds of each one and every single fight is going to be the same every single one every single crocodile is going to fight exactly the same it's going to come at you it's going to snap twice and then whip its tail around Every single hippo is going to charge at you. You have to dodge to the side, hit it once, it turns around. You dodge to the side, hit it once, it turns around. You will repeat this pattern for hours and hours and hours. And you have to do this. It's the only way of getting your equipment leveled up. Well, those are the animal parts. You've also got the bronze and wood that you need to level up bits of equipment. And you get those from attacking guards and caravans. And guess what, folks? All those guards have exactly the same attack patterns and you need loads and loads and loads of these materials. There's a skill you can unlock which allows you to buy these crafting materials from merchants and I went straight for that. I thought, yes, I'm going to get that and cut out all the grind. But guess what? Each type of merchant only has a few of these pieces in stock and you need hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and you are going to be grinding these out until you're eyes bleed. I absolutely hated that and I, I, I tried to play it where I'd just attack some things when I stumbled upon them but I found that my gear just just, just wasn't leveled up at all and I would have to think about all right we're gonna have to spend some time hunting. I don't play an Assassin's Creed game to go out murdering thousands of animals. I want to be an assassin. Anyway, the grind continues with the rest of the game because guess what? They've got level gating in this. Level gating, meaning that you can't do certain content until you are of an appropriate level. And this manifests itself really, really badly. I mean, you can try doing a quest that's 10 levels above you, but as all the quests involve having to kill a target of some sort at some point, you will find that you can do no damage no damage at all if something certainly if something's 10 levels above you i don't know where the limit is actually i forget but if an enemy is more than five levels above you don't bother attacking them just just don't you'll do no damage purely because of your level difference nothing to do with your your stats your strength your weapons their armor it's that level difference it makes them more or less invincible. And there's no point thinking, oh, well, I'll just find a more ingenious way of attacking them. I'll sneak up, I'll assassinate them. I'll just go toe to toe with them using my superior skills to dodge and evade and wear them down, even if it takes longer. It doesn't work like that. Nope, you just do no damage and they'll kill you in one hit. 
This is how crazy it is, folks. The story bosses that you have to fight during various stages of the story are considerably easier to kill than one bog-standard, unimportant NPC soldier who's five levels above you. No kidding. Later on, I got attacked by this boss riding an elephant. I got trampled by the elephant. It did shit all damage to me. I once tried attacking a guard who was about six or seven levels above me, killed me in one hit. And the reason they've got level gating, the reason they've got this, it's to make you do all the filler content to level up your character. And there is stacks and stacks of filler. Little quests like you're running along trying to get on with the story quest and a farmer meets you. Oh, Bayek, my son's been taken by the bandits. Please get him in my cart. Get my cart back. I don't care about the son. Just bring the cart back. But you think, oh, God, well, I need the XP. Go on, I'll go and do the quest. And side quests in games are usually good, usually things I like. But after a while, these, again, feel repetitive and feel like they're just put in there to make you play longer. And that's the whole ethos of the game. This is the problem. It feels like the developers were given this design brief, not how can we make a really cool game, not how can we tell this cool story of the formation of the assassins, but the design brief was, how can we keep players playing as long as possible? And the answer to that is, let's make everything as boring and grindy as possible so they have no option. If they want to get to the end game, they've got to do all this. That's what it feels like to me. Oh, do you know what else? Yeah, while we're on the subject, do you know what else is repetitive? The whole game world is littered with like soldiers camps and barracks and bandit camps and hideouts and things. And every single one has one or two treasures hidden in it. By treasures, I just mean some pretty like worthless loot you get a few coins for. At least one elite captain and a couple of guards. And in every single location, you can complete these locations. You can clear them for extra experience. You have to kill the captains and loot the treasures. And then you get some bonus XP. And you would not believe how many locations are like this. Again, for the first hour, I thought, this is cool. We're seeing some places. We're taking down these elite guys, be it by stealth or other means. And then it's not long into the game where you think, hang on, these are all exactly the same. There's no variety of enemies in this at all. They're all the same soldiers. They're all the same captains. They're all the same bad guys. Once you've played for an hour, I think you've probably met every type of enemy NPC you will meet in the entire game. And speaking of enemy NPCs, let's talk about the combat in this game. I've got to say, I don't really like it as much as, say, the combat in Black Flag, where you felt like an epic swordmaster, where you'd jump into a crowded melee of enemies, and you would block, parry, thrust, counter, attack, block, attack, counter, thrust, parry, and all this, and you were prompted in how to do it, and you, it made it look like an epic movie-style sword fight. It was fantastic, and you felt like a hero. At least I did when I played it. That's what I liked about it. This is a far more generic action RPG of hack slash dodge. Hack slash dodge. Oh, the enemy's telegraphing their attack that we can't block. I'll dodge it. Hack slash dodge repeat until the end of time. And because there's such a lack of variety in the enemies, this gets, I think, pretty stale fairly fast and pretty dull. And there's nothing really ever exciting about it. You also get animation locked, which means that if you start an attack or a big epic two-handed swing, a millisecond after you start that attack, you're locked into it. And if you see an enemy coming to get you, you can't block or parry at that point. You just know, oh, well, I'm going to eat this sword in the face and there's nothing I can do. Which means that you pay more attention to the repetitive, boring pattern and timing of the enemy's attacks, so you know exactly when you can't get away with starting another attack and you wait for their unavoidable one to get out of the way and then you repeat your pattern also the third person camera often gets into trouble when you're fighting in tight spaces like inside a building or a tent or down an alleyway it can't rotate to where it needs to be behind you so then you're trying to fight into the camera facing it but you can't see the character that you're trying to attack and you're having to guess roughly where they are um, it doesn't happen too often thankfully but I, that was a nuisance as well also the story felt confused i won't give you any spoilers but it started out at the game as a story of revenge and it very soon turned political but that didn't really seem to match up with bayek's motives in this I, it just didn't really gel also the story is drawn out 
far too long. You get to the point in the game where you think, okay, I'm, I'm done with the grinding millions of hippos and crocodiles. I just want to get through the story now. Because some bits of the story are actually quite good. But every time you think, okay, this is the last bit. This is the last guy I need to kill. There's another bit gets bolted on. And then you have to go to a new area to find that. And you think, okay, this is the last bit. I'll get there. I'll kill this last guy and we're done. And you get there and you go looking for him and you find some farmer on the road. You say, is Bob here? You know, Bob being the ancient Egyptian murderer that you need to kill, of course. And he says, ah, no, Bob was here, but Bob left. He's about an hour's north. But if you go in that way, you need to see Fred, who has some quests for you on the way. And uh, Percy will do, do some work as well. Yeah, OK, so you then ride on north and you find Fred and Percy and you do some jobs for them. And you say, right, so where's Bob? Oh, yeah, he's about another half hour that way. Just, uh, just, just you carry on. And if you see Bill, he's got some work I needs doing. And this goes on and on, and it's just there to drag you through more levels. So you then have to then grind out the content again, repeating these bloody military camps and bandit camps and side quests and filler, just so you can go on and repeat and repeat and repeat. And it doesn't need to go on this long. It, it really, really doesn't. By this stage of the game, which I think I was probably about 30 hours in, I can't remember, I was just, I've had enough, but I want to see the end of the game. The story's got to be worth it. And it just, it just really dragged out. Oh, and that reminds me, actually, the weapon upgrade system. I mentioned it as one of the good things that you can upgrade your weapons from the start. You can. You can upgrade weapons. You can upgrade skills. You can put a lot of effort into upgrading Bayek. But guess what? All those careful decisions you have to make, all that effort you put into upgrading the weapons and armor, you don't even use Bayek for some of the final fights in the game. So all that work you do to upgrade this stuff and get these supposedly amazing skills, which to me didn't feel all that amazing, you don't even get to use them when it really matters. So overall, I've got to say, I don't think I've been more disappointed in a video game ever than Assassin's Creed Origins because I thought the first hour of gameplay was going to lead me into something amazing and awesome here, and it completely let me down over the rest of the game. Not only that, it's also put me off playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey, although people do tell me that's better. But if it's more of this repetitive grind and filler, like I do know it was at launch, then I'm not looking forward to playing through that. So overall score, I was thinking that this was going to be an 8 or 9 out of 10 game when I started playing. By the time I'd finished, it's a 5 out of 10 from me. Really disappointed, don't recommend.